Welcome to The Dennis Report. I'm Dennis Acheson. Our show is authentic, honest, and it's trusted because everything's connected. Many thanks to those who've supported the show. It's deeply appreciated. It allows us to carry on our work and we hope others join too. If you'd like to help the show, go to thedennisreport.ca and click on PayPal or Patreon. Hi, welcome to a special edition of The Dennis Report. Today we're going to take you on a tour of the Mactaquack Dam. We're going to go deep inside the belly of the beast. Today is April 27th, 2023, and we did our nickel tour on April 21st of this year, almost at the peak of the water coming through the St. John River in flood season. Tom Skid of MB Power was our tour guide, and Betsy Griswold, my wife and I, had an hour and a half through the monstrous piece of concrete that is our dam. It's a special place in many ways, and I hope you enjoy the tour. The vibration, the constant noise, were something unique to that space. Typical of tours like this, we start off in an interpretation center, where Tom starts to guide through the basics so we understand what we're looking at when we walk through the dam. As you probably noticed, right, right here, these are our, what they call diversion spill gates. And some of them are open right now. I think number two is open, number four, and number five. And so water yeah, there's too much water. So right now, to run all six units at full load, you need about 80,000 or 84,000 cubic feet per second. Right now, I think we're at about, well, I think this morning it was 220,000 cubic feet per second. So we got all kinds of water to uh, run a heavy load. Uh, it causes some issues too, if you get too much water coming through. So you have a different, uh, d different uh, differential. The differential between here and here, if this comes up too much, it cuts back how much load you can put, put through. So I'll show you when we get down here. So these are another set of uh, sluiceway gates, same as here. And I'm not sure which gates are open here, but uh, they ha there's 10 gates all together, so. What happens if there's more water than the... Uh, gates can handle, then the, you'll have an over overflow, it'll start coming over, but unit one is here, two, three, four, five, and six. So the water comes into the intakes under the water here, and uh, comes through each unit, and there's the transformers for each unit. There's an extra transformer for what they call station service, so we can get power from the grid into the plant and then when we produce it we send it back out I guess a lot of people don't realize that um, you know they have to go by what the flow of the river is so whatever the natural flow of the river is that's what they naturally let down most of the time okay. now, you, now on Wednesday uh, Tuesday um, there are some exceptions so on Tuesday we had flows I think they were around 286 you know, 1,000 cubic feet per second. And what they were doing was that the, the, the head pond from here to Woodstock was kind of equalizing, so the water wasn't coming down as fast, so it was starting to back up to Woodstock. So they had a drop, you had to open more gates to put, a, I think they call it the curve, but they actually put more slope on the, actually starting to drain this. If you drove, went up here Tuesday and Wednesday, you'd it, say, oh man, the, they're, you know, dropped by five or 10 feet, you can see it coming down. So they're trying to put a slope on the river so the river, the water comes down faster versus just pooling up there. So on Tuesday, I know sometime in the afternoon, I think they cut it back by about 50,000 because they, they had met the slope they needed for upriver. Up and that's why we had high water this is Tuesday. We had the highest water. Yeah. So, but anyway, they, so, so what they do, so it goes through on the intake and I'll show you what they call the pen stock when we go over here. There's two, two gates per unit. So they got an A and B side and they both come through and there's a set of screens in the front here to screen out wood and all that kind of stuff. And it goes through and then it goes through inside. These, these are really, really big inside that just swirl around. And it goes, there's a set of gates and a few things in here and it goes through this turbine and the water comes out to the tail race. So under perfect conditions, if you had lots of water here and your, and your water level 
in the river was low, you can make maximum amount of power. But right now we can't make maximum because the differential is too high. This is high and this is also high, so it won't allow as much water to go through. So we can't maximize the power. So if you look up here, it tells you what, what we're producing for power. 507 megawatts right now. Grand Falls, 51. You can, you know, 67. Tobik, Milltown, and Sisson's doing nothing right now. I think they got a transformer issue with Sisson right now. So. And there's the wind, wind farm. Ken Hills is only three, three uh, megawatts. And then the Physiquit Falls, that's the dam. Baldoon's at 343. Caribou. So there's a lot of wind energy, but people get all excited about wind energy. But if the wind's not blowing, it's not making power. Good morning, but it's back online again. So, so this one right here, you know, one is producing 94 megawatts. Right here. Wow. Yeah. a bunch of air in the bottom where the, where the propeller turns and, and, it, and it makes it uh, just an airspace. And when they do that, the, instead of generating electricity, it turns into an electric motor. It draws electricity to, to turn it. Okay. So, and then it's, yeah. So it's, uh, it, it, it could do two functions. It can make electricity. It can also act as a motor and draw electricity. So if you've got too much on the line, you have no place to shove it, then we can run these here and draw power off the line and then switch back and forth. It's kind of a unique thing, really. See the water down there coming in? Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's surface water and uh, water collection from the other side over here and a few other places. 
I'm going to take you down in some of these places later. Just wanted to show you. This would not be fun to walk around in winter out here. Yeah, it's cool. So, there's your spill gates here. Okay. So, number nine, this one here, the little bit coming out. This is gate number 10 right here. They don't open that unless they absolutely have to, because what happens if you open that up, it, the water sprays all over the place here. So if they, if they need to, they'll pop this gate here open, only if they need to. Wow. Yeah. So, so you notice the concrete face here is getting bad. Yeah. See, there's even chunks of concrete on the thing here. Yeah. So they got these Jersey barriers set up so people don't go near there in case a piece comes off. Now, this summer, We've got uh, a whole pile of pallets of um, a screen, a mining screen. So they're going to go up and drill and screen and pin all these places. So no, nothing, if it falls off, it doesn't come down. It stays in the, just like you do in a mine. Yeah, they screen, or on screen. the side of the highway. Yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. Exactly, yeah. I, I was so. thrilled when you had um, offered to Dennis to well, take you for Well, you asked me last year about it, and I haven't forgotten, so. Because I'm always fascinated by this dam. Yeah, I, it's not too bad for noise. Like, I work in a lot of industries, and this is probably one of the quieter ones. But some places get pretty loud. It gets loud down here in, in some places, but. So, this is our uh, mechanical electrical shop. We have every second Friday off, so these guys are supposed to be off today, and this is my Friday to work. You can stick your earplugs in here if you want. Adjustments to make the clothes, right? Did you get lost or? Oh, I hear it's scuffy. So this is a waterproof uh, door. Waterproof door. I was just explaining that we check this out to make sure it works because the concrete grows. So we have a flood, this closes and this room's closed off. Okay, so in here, I'll just go to here. So these are what they call the fish pumps. So it, these pumps pump water over outside where I was going to take you guys. So it, it provides water for fish attraction in the spring. So the, so the water is pumped from down below out there and it causes lots of bubbles and stuff and the fish get attracted to the flow. Also, they normally run unit one in the, in the summertime. Now we're going to go to unit two, and it has variable uh, pitch blades, so we can turn set it around 100% wide open, run it to 40%. Makes lots of bubbles, and it, the fish get attracted, and then they end up coming into this into the pen into this fishway. So these pumps supply all the water out there and make a make a flow of water so the fish think that it's going upstream. So. This is this is unit one. So this is the oil supply that that controls the uh, what they call the wicket gates that controls the water flow. I'm going to show you. There's one of these for every unit. I'm going to take you down to one of the units and we'll have a look at what it what it looks like. Okay. You probably will need your ear protection here, down here. Your earplugs. Exactly, yeah, exactly. So it's grown like this. And that's why we have all these new gray beam support beams here to support the ceiling.
down below that shaft, there's a three three big propellers down there, and that's what the water goes in and turns. But you see those big two big cylinders there? There's called gate. There's a bunch of gates down in there, right? So those gates control the water flow. So the more load, the more the gates open up. The less load, the gates start closing, and the blades have an ability to change the pitch of the blades on, on down below. There's also what they call IPIs and a whole bunch of other instrumentation related stuff. So that tells you how much it moves? Well, yeah, they have a readout downstairs to the board and they can tell the shot the, how much movement of the building. And they record it every year. There's all kinds of them around here. Um, there's a, what they call IPIs. This is where we were a while ago, right here. So. So in, in 2018, 2019, there was water on the deck here, I think. So they put these in place. But next year, uh, the insurer wants to raise this wall another couple of feet. So next year, it's gonna be about this high and uh, all the way around the perimeter. Just in case the water comes up to here, they wanna have it that much higher. See the, the green box there? The water was just a, if you can picture the box part of that, the water was just slightly below that. This was completely flooded here Tuesday. See all the trees? They floated in here. They weren't drug in here, pushed. They just floated in. It was all full of water. As you can see over here, it was all full of water too, because look at all the logs. <clears throat> if you the dentist, like <clears throat> what these green boxes are, there's gates here. These gates open up. The fish, those pumps I sh showed you downstairs with the waterproof door, they pump water out here and attracts the fish. The fish go in through here, in through here, and it goes to Crowder over here. There's a big gate in there, and the Crowder moves ahead like that and pushes the fish into this uh, area over here, and I'll show you. So the fish get into here. It's called a Crowder. And they come up and they swim into these pens right here, these two pens. So before, they okay, there's a gate on there. They keep the gate closed so the fish are just waiting at this pen to come in because they're following the natural uh, attraction of the water, right? So above your head right here, see this here basket? Right here? That, that, that's on, <clears throat> on a crane. So this crane goes over, drops this basket down inside there, okay? And then they open the gate up, the fish swim into this basket, they lift it back up at the crane, comes over here, and then the uh, Department of Fisheries and Oceans back up, and they have a, like a tanker truck, and the fish go into the tanker truck, and they fill it with water with this pipe, then they go over and dump, they t have a spot over here where they unload the fish. So you can get some pretty nice fish in there, like, you know, 20 and 30 pound salmon sometimes, and wow. yeah. And the gas bro will be unbelievable here in another month or so. You wouldn't believe how much gas bro comes up. It's just full. So I hope you enjoyed the tour. And special thanks to Tom for his time and walking us through the facility. The issue of the Mactaquack Dam is going to be a major topic over the next couple of years. And I hope this inside peek at how the dam works and in some of its challenges help us understand better what's in front of us and maybe what we can do but at least you know something about the dam and how it works be good have fun love each other